All right, guys, everybody loves boost. Got my man Brian Wolf with me. We're calling the wolf. He's done these 7.3 Godzilla combos, NA up to about 800 horsepower, and so far supercharged over 1,700 horsepower. The 1,700 horsepower is full race mode. This is a street car. This has twin turbos. Brian, what do we got? Yeah, this uh, we got really a work of art. Uh, Dave Zimmerman and the guys at Team D Z did a wonderful job on the fabrication on this, which uh, you know you guys can you will check out in the video. But what we have behind all the beautiful uh, fabrication work is we have a 7.3 liter Ford stock block, stock crank, Calais rods, Weissco pistons, Calais camshaft. Um, we've got our stage two heads. So we're right. working with Dave uh, Visner, and we have a. Danbury Competition Engines intake manifold on this, which fits really nice under the stock hood. So we've got a pretty stout combination. Uh, we also have a 417 Motorsport pan on this. It's a very nice aluminum fabricated pan uh, that fits with Dave's uh, K-member kit. So everything fits nice and, uh, and bolts up. And then the headers on this thing are kind of messed up because they're pointing forward. Right. Why are they pointing forward? Well. We're feeding those twin turbos. We got twin 69 millimeter Borg Warner turbos, uh, which then feed through an intercooler that Dave's guys made, uh, feeding that intake. So we're looking to get you know 12 to 1800 horsepower, or, sorry, 12 to 1400 horsepower out of this combination. It's intended to be a shop street car. We want to run E85 with it. Um, a lot of our you know people are on the internet are asking about twins E85. Right. We haven't done a combination like that. So uh, we thought, well, before we start talking about what we can do, we better make sure what we can do and put this together, see how everything works. We're going to run this through a 6R transmission because we can. We, this is intended to be a fair weather driver, not, you know, right. I, I hesitate on daily driver, but, you know, when it's nice out, you know, we want to use this uh, as our, you know, as what we drive. Um, it's going to have uh, a U.S. ship controller in it uh, for the transmission. Uh, the engine controller on this uh, street car, which we like to use, is the OBR engine controller. I think we'll get into that in another video. Along with, um, we, this car has been totally rewired uh, with one of their power distribution systems. Takes a lot of uh, uh, the old factory wiring on, right. all, all the excess stuff, and uh, you know, makes for a really nice package. So we're really excited to get this thing out um, on the street, see how it behaves, how it performs and uh, hopefully how everything you know, cools and it drives nice. So, if you're looking, you can tell, even though it doesn't have a front end on it, you can tell by the windshield, it's an SN95 New Edge Mustang. So Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the kit that will allow a 7.3 to go into this body style or any Fox body, essentially? Yeah, the, uh, yeah. now what comes with this is um, a lot of the stuff for this specific vehicle was fabricated you know, for this car. Right. Now, um, as you mentioned, Team Z Motorsports makes a K-member kit for the 7.3 that will go into this, Fox bodies and anything else. Uh, they also make this nice tubular front end, which I think if you're putting twin turbos on it or whatever, right. you want to get all that factory sheet metal out of the way and, uh, and put this on, which uh, works really, really nice. But as far as um, the turbo setup itself, you know, that's not a, a, an off-the-shelf kit. Right. So let's throw this thing up in the air. We'll give you a look underneath. We'll give you a look at the turbo setup that's front mounted, which is super cool because you're going to have those two turbos sticking right through the fascia or at least right behind the fascia. Mm -hmm. Alright guys, so a couple of twins, as you can see, the kind of twins that we love. Um, you can see the custom intercooler with the integrated fan system, right? Yes. Yeah, as, yep, as you said, Evan, so yeah, custom uh, intercooler, uh, triple fans on it because they had to be kind of short to fit, you know, within the package. Mm -hmm. uh, as we mentioned, we have these twin 69mm Borg Warner turbos. Um, we're using turbo spark waste gates and blow off valves and uh, system on this as well and then the rest of the stuff is you know pretty is, is all custom made for the car uh, as the turbos are mounted low um, we do have the drain tubes 
they will go through a pump and then return into the pan uh, for coming out of the turbos. I was going to ask you if there's any issues with running the, the turbos so low. Yeah, that's, yeah, I think there's probably two. One is going to be a road hazard, you know, we're going to have to have some nice air cleaners in front of these. Right. And then the second thing is, you know, for the turbos to drain the oil out, you want a kind of a downward path to get it back into the engine. Right. These are just about too low, so we had, that's why we had to uh, put the uh, positive pump on there to suck uh, the oil out of the turbos and shoot it back into the pan. I got you. All right, guys, so one of the things about the 7.3 is it's a very tall engine. It's not super duper wide compared to a Windsor. Uh, it's narrower than a Coyote, but it is a very tall engine. And so one of the issues, of course, is oil pan clearance. So Brian, what have you done to make this thing fit so neatly? Okay. Well, um, which I take the credit, but really I used, uh, you know, again, Dave's uh, cross member with us uh, with a manual uh, rack on it, which lowers the rack down. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we chose on this application to use a 417 Motorsport pan. And then, again, that fits very nicely. But even with that, you know, we did have to even notch that rack a little bit to clear uh, the, the corner of the uh, of the pan. So, as as you said, Evan, you know, because of the deep skirt block, everything else, um, you know, we really had to take every advantage we could to make that fit. And I did notice on this car, and we're doing a swap on a '68 Cyclone, and we tried to test fit the motor with the stock pan, and it's just very, very uh, awkward right. looking, and it sits very high. From the top, this engine sits really nicely in the car. Yeah, because uh, this pan takes about two inches out of the, the depth of the stock pan. Okay. And two inches doesn't sound like a lot, but it actually is when you're trying <laughs> to get the car low. So right. that, that, that helped a bunch. It does have a remote mounted oil filter on it as, as well. Um, not that that makes a big difference as far as getting it low, but if you, if you had the stock oil filter with that two inches cut off the pan, now the filter becomes the lowest part. Yeah, you definitely don't want and, that and on the street car. That. So, so the relocation makes some sense. And there, there are a lot of things when you start calling something a street car versus a race car that are questionable as far as drivability, reliability, um, things like maintenance. You're going to put a lot more miles on a street car. So oil changes, mm -hmm. uh, things like that are things to think about when you're building or trying to do something for a street versus a track only car. Yeah, absolutely. Everything, you know, when we we're putting this together is, you know, again, the idea is. It's going to be something we're going to want to drive a lot and, you know, enjoy. You right. know, as opposed to uh, the race car stuff where uh, you work on a lot, you get short bursts of enjoyment, and then, uh, you know, you, you, you do more work. Okay. Yeah. Um, what are some of your thoughts on why you did this the way you did it? Yeah, you know, to be really open, again, we like to have credit where credit's due. Uh, when we started to put this together, um, you know, I told Dave's guys, you know, hey, you know, we want to put the twins on it. And uh, Nick Worrell, who's the guy that really uh, was doing a lot of the fabrication work with Dave, you know, he loves turbos and, and that type of stuff. So it was really more of his creativity right. uh, to allow where he wanted uh, to make everything look symmetric, look good. We had a big discussion on the exhaust because we are exiting, as Evan said, in front of the tire with uh, the only mufflers being these little spinny things to, uh, uh, to bring the noise down. But we thought, hey, if... Uh, under normal accelerations of that, we think we'll be okay where we're not running, you know, mufflers and the exhaust out the back. So this was probably the, the, the biggest discussion we had was what are we going to do with the exhaust and how are we going to go uh, about that. Right, and he did you some absolutely beautiful custom headers. You can take a look at these. These are just fantastic. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, these are, we got these covered up with heat wrap now. <laughs> um, but yeah, if we can uh, dig out some uh, photos to include with the, the work that was done on those stainless uh, headers. It, it, yeah, they, they are you know, work of art. Yeah, so like Brian said, this is a shop test car with 12 to 1400 horsepower in a typical Mustang. You all know that equals probably pretty low eights if uh, if you get traction. Yeah, that's where we're, we're, we're probably thinking this car should run is somewhere in the in the eight second range and uh, you know, be able to drive back and forth the track. That's fantastic. So there you go, another video. 7-3 Godzilla stuff. We're doing it. We're testing it. Brian is out here building it and racing it. We're just going to keep moving forward. Thanks for checking out the channel. Please hit that subscribe button, drop us a comment, and we'll check you later.